starts with the small stuff. Even the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. Today, Pastor Garth calls us to focus on the big picture. Let tomorrow worry about itself and God will take care of the small stuff. Thanks for tuning in at Solid Rock Christian Assembly and stay tuned for this powerful message. Solid Rock welcomes you. Today I'd like to use as a subject over the next little while, focus on the big thing. Focus on the big picture. Focus on the big picture. The everyday occurrences of life are so many. The many, many experiences can be so overwhelming when you look at them individually. Did you know that? That's why sometimes it's so difficult for us to have joy in our hearts because we take every experience and we handle them as if that's our entire life and before we move on to the next phase we are so worn out because phase one two three four five and so on they've overwhelmed us and create such inconsistency as it relates to the plans of God so life can be overwhelming when you look at them individually when you look at the current the current financial need you may have in your life at this point in time how am I going to make it financially. Toronto is an expensive city. And I just found out the other day thinking that Toronto was so expensive, but, uh, but ranking it with 219 cities. They say Toronto ranks some, like 100 plus. I'm not sure if they say 118. I said, are you serious? I thought we were really, really up there. Try going to Hong Kong. But the current financial need in your life, not only that, but you may have to, you may be dealing with a, a troubled relationship, marriage. Or when you look at the state of your children, if you look at all of these things and individually just let them consume your life, your life can come to a streaking halt. When you look at the demands at work, where uh, in this day and age, work has become such a demanding thing. Uh, for us today. But when you look at the, the demands at work and also trying to deal with uh, the spiritual void and all the different demands that's in you, and you can continue to name the various challenges, life can be overwhelming when you look at them in their various successions. A gentleman was passing through a museum, and you've heard this story before, those of you who've been around a while. And as he was passing through the museum, they had, uh, you know, a design on the wall. It was a museum, obviously, an art, art museum. And as he looked at the wall, he saw this masterpiece. And this looks like a masterpiece. And right there and then, it had various colors, put your color glasses on. And in it, there were various uh, colors, as I mentioned, and there was a spot there, or several spots that were so dark, just literally, just extremely dark. And a fly was on one of the dark spots, and as the person was passing through there, looking at this incredible masterpiece, he said, what do you think is going through the eyes, uh, the mind of the fly? Which one am I using? Is it this or this one? I think it's this one, right? He said, what do you think is going on in the mind of this fly? The person at the art gallery said, the fly is looking at this, and the fly is saying, this is the absolute worst thing ever. He said, why is that? He said, because for the fly... The fly is so close to the situation. The fly is in a spot where it is absolutely dark and all he can see is darkness covering the situation. But he said if somehow this fly had the ability to pull back and to get this sort of a vast, uh, view of the whole thing and back up a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. Be careful you don't fall off the cliff now. Look at it. You will realize, wow, this thing is impressive. 
And that's the way it is in life. We allow individual circumstances to determine our destiny. And when we do that, we are unable to see the vast incredibleness of your own life and the plan of God as it relates to you. The big picture is a panoramic picture. That is a view that is, from, uh, that is done from an altitude or a distance that will enable you to see far and wide. Sometimes we'd be on flights and we take turns. Uh, my wife will ask to take the window, and, um, and I would sit in the middle, and the next time I'd be like, it's my turn now. Of course, she sits there to sleep. I don't know why she takes the window. Look for about five minutes, and then they left it at. For me now, I'm sitting over there, and I'm like, what's going on over there? Because I want to see the whole picture. I want to see where Lake Ontario ends. I want to see uh, the bridge between, you know, Ontario and New York and to see all the, the... And then after we cross the border, I want to see Lake Erie and to see the setup of, of the different place. I want to see the Carolinas as you're flying going south and, and, and to try to figure out where we are and to look at different places and start to guess them and see towns and cities and all of those things. I want to see when we're coming over over the Caribbean and say, hey, that's Cuba. And then after that, I said, here we go. We're in the east, turn part of Jamaica, and here we are right in Montego Bay, getting ready to say it's minus 30 home and plus 30 here. Can you imagine that 60 degree turnaround? But you just like to, to, to be there to analyze things. And when you see the big picture, you kind of get a feeling as to what's going on. But when you're sitting there in the middle of the aisle and all you can see are the ear hostesses walking back and forth and looking at your clock and say, is it time for water now or something like that? You don't know what's going on. You're just watching kids acting, sometimes crying. But when you're there and be able to see it like a bird, fly like an eagle, you start to see far and wide, and you start to see God's glorious earth. And it changed your perspective when it comes to life. It's seeing things far and wide because of the altitude and the distant from the whole thing. Having such a vision or perspective will allow you to see where you're going. Avoid stressing over the short-term things and, and to stop causing every occurrence or experience to define your life or your destiny, to determine where you're going in order to move from where you are. And where God has destined you to be, it is vital that you see the big picture. It is so vital. If we do not see the big picture in life, there are so many things we'll never understand. If we do not understand the big picture, we're going to ask ourselves, why was Job tested? We don't understand the big picture Job was looking at his life individually based on the different uh, occurrences or succession as far as the experiences in his life. But Job was tested for a reason. How many of you ever got encouraged by going into the most doom and gloom book in the Bible, Job? But man, let the spirit of discouragement and darkness come upon you. And you see how quickly you can tell where people are at in their lives based on the scriptures that they quote. All of a sudden they say like, Job. And you realize that they're going through a deep, dark dungeon and a place of excessive misery and all of that. And if it wasn't for bad luck, they'd have no luck at all or anything like that. And they go down and they're trying to find strength and to say, Job overcame. I can too. Amen. Why was Job tested? You would ask yourself this. He said, why was Stephen stoned? He said, as a matter of fact, the stoning of Stephen, it was terrible and all of that. But guess what? It opened the door for a person by the name of Saul that was present there to become Paul and to become the writer of, of 13 or more, 13 books of the New Testament. I want to say to you today that it may have been bad, but that's a tremendous exchange. 
Why was Stephen stoned? Why did Nero kill Paul? Well, let me tell you something. There were so many people, martyrs, who faced incredible challenge. And they recognized that the champion of the New Testament, the most influential person outside of Jesus Christ in the New Testament, life went at the hand of an evil king. And so when men and women face challenges, they say, Paul can make a decision like that. So can I. My allegiance to God exceeds everything else in this world. He said to you, why was James killed? And you could go on, and then at the same time, Peter escaped. You can get so caught up into your little experiences in life that you'll never be able to see the vastness of the plans of God. I want to say to you today that there is a mountain view that God wants as it relates to your life, and God wants to do something incredible. Do not allow individual circumstances to determine your destiny. You need to move from the place of origin and pass the place that you are currently to your place of destiny and if you're going to do that you need a holistic view Amen. looking at them all all these individually can cause us to get discouraged but God's big picture makes all the difference in the world let's consider God here uh, for a moment when it comes to his way of viewing things we see things like the fly in the museum on the picture. We see the dark spot and we say, this is doom and gloom. But oftentimes, uh, uh, when, when, it, when, it, when it comes to God, our re really our vision is what you call finite uh, comprehension when it comes to life and the various circumstances. But, but God now, when it comes to God, on the other hand, God is what we call omnipotent. You remember that word? Meaning he, meaning he is all Powerful. God is omnipresent, which means that he is everywhere present at the same time. So God is in heaven and God is here right now. And at the same time, God is omniscient, which means that he has the ability or not has the ability. He knows all things. There is no knowledge beyond God. God does not have the capacity to learn new things so he could get brighter. God is a climax of knowledge. God is a climax of power. And God is a climax of existence. He exists within the seen and the unseen realm. All at the same time. And outside of both realms, all at the same time. God uh, can operate in every realm and he has the universe in his hand. And so when we look at it, we need to remember he's got the whole wide world in his hand. He got you and me, brother, in his hand. You got you and me, sister. He's got the tiny little baby. He's got the entire thing. And sometimes it seems as if our world is overrun by the various social and political issues that we face on a day to their basis but even though we fight even though we stand up even though we speak up even though we act up at the end of the day we still need to remember that as our trust is anchored in God and as we become agents of prayer and, and become ambassadors of God remember that God never loses a battle and so we need to continue to focus in Jesus name he's omnipotent omniscient and omnipresent which means he sees uh, big picture. God sees the big picture. He sees the past, the present, and the future all at the same time. So in God's life, line of view, it's kind of like somebody standing on a rooftop and seeing the parade from beginning to end, and then another person standing there in the parade itself. You look at it and you say to yourself, like this Raptors parade, over two million people showed up for it. Man, I couldn't believe that. That's, and and, and, and you, you, you look at that, you could not see much. But when they take an aerial view, you start to see the, the, the end to that sand of people. And you realize that there is a beginning and there is an end to this, even this massive, insurmountable 2.3 million people or so. And thank God the other day there was one in Brazil that outdid that. Because I said, why should the basketball get that much people and Jesus not get it? In Brazil, they had three million people marching to declare the things of God. Amen. Amen. That is a place to shout. That's bigger than a raptor's shout. Some of you shout so much for raptors. 
I had a missionary who spent 15 years in Brazil, and he said, when we went there, a missionary friend, he said, when we went there, he said, he said um, there was only 1.5% evangelical in Brazil. Today, we have over 30%. I would say that is good news in Jesus' name. That's over 20-fold increase. And we're looking to God to see a wave of revival coming across this land that will see the banner of Jesus Christ lifted up in this nation and Jesus Christ be honored. I'm believing God. We're here for a reason. We have a purpose. And we're not going to stop until we see Jesus Christ be exalted in this nation. Amen. But Jesus, but the God is able to see the entire parade while we're in it and we're like, wow, how do I get out of here? Where am I? Because it's so intense. We're so confused by all the things that we're seeing and we're bumping into people in every, every way and all of that. We're like, what a crowd. Like, where do I go? But we our God sees the big picture. And so that's the kind of mentality God wants us to have. He sees the past, present, and the future all at the same time while we see it in succession. He knows the whole path of life. And at the same time when it comes to us, to balance things off as it relates to us, God gives us a free will. And so our free will determines our perspective and our approach in life so, in so many ways. And that's why many times we do not uh, achieve the victory because of our free will. And it's the same thing to the victory that we experience in God. Our free will will lead us to that. To balance things off, he gave us a free will, thus making us determiners of our destinies by choice. Now if you look at the the scripture I read earlier in, in uh, Genesis chapter 45, it presents the life of Joseph. And Joseph is one of the most, uh, or the story of Joseph, or the life of him is one of the most graphic and attractive stories of the Old Testament. Through his life, God shows his divine ability to mold, to shape, and to direct those who trust and obey him. He shows how he's able to take individual from the worst of circumstances, worst of situations to the best of situations. God is showing his ability there. But let me tell you something. When you are going through the worst of circumstances, there are a lot of things that can cause you to shut down and to lose out on the plan of God if you're not, uh, uh, um, if you're, if you're not conscious of the need to see things in see the big picture. If you're not conscious of that, then after a while, you know what will happen? After a while, you will find yourself discouraged and in the pit of life. But God wants you to see the big picture. And Joseph had to look at some big pictures to help get himself out of those terrible places in life. Remember Joseph? Well, if we try to summarize his life, the life of Joseph, I guess we could use four points. Point number one, his dream. This is his dream, a preview. His dream previewed. Joseph was a young man growing up with his brothers. He was like a little goody two-shoe. And, you know, sometimes in society people don't like goody two-shoes. Uh, but sometimes it works out for you as a as a, a goody two-shoe, you, 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 you do what is right. Nothing is wrong with being respectful to your parents. As a matter of fact, that's a good thing. Uh, that's a good thing uh, to be respectful to them. Because not only will you get their wisdom and harness, you know, the things that they're presenting to you, but not only that, but guess what? Uh, it will teach you good attitude. You go around the place, and if you learn to respect your parents, you'll respect your, uh, your peers, you'll respect your boss, and you'll have a good attitude that will determine your altitude, and then you'll create a good atmosphere, then the anointing of God will be upon your life, and then you'll advance to new altitude, be not because so much your aptitude, but because of your attitude. It's not what you can do, uh, really, and how brilliant you are, or anything like that. It's, it's, it's your own spirit, and, and personality, and all of that, and all the these things will determine where you go. Joseph was brilliant. But what stood out for Joseph was his attitude when he came to facing challenges, his dream. 
Joseph went there and he had a glimpse of a glorious future in Genesis 37. He came there and he saw a future of prominence. It was so shocking that when his brothers heard it, you got to be kidding you. When his parents heard it, the parents' reaction was to rebuke him. And then from his, from his siblings came hatred and jealousy. But as Joseph continued, and he didn't calm down, it seemed as if he continued to let his dreams be known. And sometimes in life, uh, you, you know, you have to watch out for dream killers sometimes when it comes to your life. You have to watch out the things that will come across you when your mouth is open and all of that. Of course, you need people who can critique things and give return, you know, give their opinions and things like that with the aim of, a, of your life progressing and you achieving things. But for Joseph, as he continued to talk, things got bad for him. And then his dream that was previewed now was no longer, was, was now number two. A dream, again, his dream, Joseph, another aspect of his dream, his dream is now challenged. Joseph found himself in a pretty bad place. And here's the thing. He started facing adver adversity. Now, adversity and hardship is how a good soldier of Jesus Christ is formed. When those things come across your path and start to, you know, knock at your life and all of that, how you respond to these things and how you allow it to work in and through your life will determine your outcome. And so you, you're not going to become some mighty warrior of God if you can't even handle this or handle that or handle anything. At the end of the day, you're going to have to learn to wake up whether you want to or not. At the end of the day, you're going to learn to work hard whether you want to or not. At the end of the day, you need to study whether you want to or not. At the end of the day, you need to find yourself in church whether you feel like it or not. Even as, as the preacher or, or, or the young man who, 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 who went before the, the, the uh, his mom and said, Mom, I don't feel like going to church today. Mom said, Son, you need to go to church. Give me three reasons, son. said, Well, first of all, uh, the mom said, First of all, son, you need to be in church because it's good for you. And uh, another reason, you need to be in church because God wants you there. And thirdly, you need to be in church because you're the pastor and people are waiting for you to be there. <laughs> But sometimes in life we can get uh, pretty uh, overwhelmed or, 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 or discouraged. But, but, but if, if when, when, the, when your dream is challenged, it means that you need to get another gear. You need to dig deep. You need to find something in prayer. You need to find something in the word of God. You need to find something elsewhere and rise up and do not die there. If Joseph had allowed adversities... Uh, to come and dominate his life and to determine how he would approach life, Joseph would be in serious, serious trouble today. And not only that, but he could have changed the entire course of history for an entire nation. Imagine that sometimes. Have you ever thought about when you, felt, when you feel discouraged? When you feel challenges in your life? Have you ever thought, what is my true role? Like, what exactly am I called to do? If I sit here and I decide to give in and give, or give up, what's going, how will it affect the whole scheme of things? How relevant am I to society? If I get up today and I say to myself, you know what? I'm going to uh, shut this down. Ministry is not for me. Well, some of my critics will say, good. I, I knew that from day one. <laughs> But here's the thing. The bottom line is that it will have consequences and repercussions that will go beyond me. Did you know that? If I get up today and decide to go live in immorality, guess what? For me to come and start to tell people about living right before God, you know how you compromise that? Or, you know, at the same time, it's going to have a ripple effect on so many lives. And so it is vital for me not to give in to fleshly appetite. 
Because at the end of the day, it will have consequences and repercussions beyond me. It will have it beyond you. And so you cannot just get up this day and just say, ah, oh, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. There, let me try adultery today and see what it's like. No, you can't do that. It will mess you up and it will have a, a sort of ricochet effect that will affect um, those around you. You can't just get up and say, well, I can't bother with this marriage anymore. You don't just get up and say, look, I'm tired of this. I'm just going to walk out of it. No, you can't do that when it comes to life. It will affect you. It will affect your children. It will affect your community. It will affect those who are looking up to you. People who will, will say, well, he was able to, 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 to stick it out. How did he do it? How did dad do it? How did pastor do it? How did deacon do it? How did brother so-and-so? How did sister so-and-so? And they will get, gain strength from it. You rise up and you dig deep when adversities come along your pathway. Your response is not to sit there and just grow up. You cry if, if you must for a moment, but rise up very, very soon and do not allow yourself to be saturated with discouragement because discouragement is, is one of the strong evils as it relates to the cloud that the enemy pours on the people of God to reduce the production of the people of God and to suppress kingdom building and kingdom work. I want to say to you today, your dream will be challenged like Joseph. But you can't look there through a microscope. You must get a telescope and start to look far and wide. It's not a micro look. It is a macro look. You must go out there and open wide the eyes, your eyes and see the, 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 over the horizon and to see the greatness of what's ahead of you. Sometimes you're driving. Remember driving sometimes, we've driven to Florida a lot of times. But I remember you're going through places like the Tennessee mountain area, places of Pennsylvania, and you see the darkness and immense cloud and everything, and you're saying to yourself, my goodness, I can't see. Uh, sp speed in the, in the way hour of the night, midnight, 2 a.m., would just drop to a very slow pace because you, you just cannot see anything. Or the rain would come on top of it, and sometimes it's almost like everything out of heaven just decides to fall on your car. Can't see. But you have to start to picture the big picture and say, you know where you're going? You're going to sunny Florida. If you stay the course, and continue there. If you stop here and start to move and grow. So keep your eyes on the prize because that's really what matters. And that's what we do here at Solid Rock. Join us on a Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. for a great worship service and a great word from God. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. You can visit our YouTube channel for more sermons. And our address is 6640 Finch Avenue, just in case you're hoping to come by. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again at The Rock. Solid Rock Lord.